Good morning and welcome back to the New Forest on a bright December day. Well this is the last update of the diary for 2021 so we'll be looking back at uh, some of the things that went on in the forest during November and December. So let's see what happened. As we moved into November the red deer rut was still going on. These lovely pictures taken by Annette Gregory show a magnificent stag with his harem and defending them against an interloper. By the end of November, the rut was over and the stags were all friends again. In the summer, we saw this roe deer with its bright summer coat. Now we see a roe deer in his winter coat. These images are poor quality as I took them on my phone camera but you can see how well he blends in with his surroundings. Late fungi were still appearing in the forest in November. There seemed to be a bumper crop of holly berries this year. The old wives tale says that this is a sign of a hard winter to come. It's been a very mild winter so far. Come back next time to see how we fared in January and February. At the beginning of the year, we saw the pine trees being felled in this area of the forest. Now, the ground's being cleared with the tree roots grubbed up and burned. We'll come back next year to see if any new trees have been planted. November the 13th was Remembrance Sunday. This year was the 100th anniversary of the formation of the British Legion and parades were held across the New Forest and the rest of the country. These were very well attended. Sadly, there aren't too many World War II soldiers left to honour their fallen comrades. The autumn leaves were late this year and it was well into November before they were at their best. These images from Anne Hall really highlight the beauty of autumn in the forest. Towards the end of the month the leaves were all falling, covering the forest floor. There's a path here somewhere. After a very wet end to October, November and December were both mainly dry and mild. We had some of these and some of these. We also had a few frosty mornings. At the end of November and early December we had a couple of named storms. We got off pretty lightly in the new forest but the wind was still enough to bring down a few trees. Many of the days were like this. Listen. Peace. It's winter now at Brookhill Vineyard. The winemaking process, or vinification, begins after the harvest. The grape juice that was produced from the crushing of the grapes is pumped into stainless steel tanks and allowed to settle. It's then pumped into another tank to remove the sediment. Yeast and sugar, if it's needed, are added and the fermentation begins. This will take between one and six weeks depending on the weather and the yeast strain. The tanks are sealed to keep out oxygen, which could affect the fruit flavours of the wines. After a period of weeks or months, the wine is pumped into a clean tank, leaving the sediment or lees behind. A fine clay called bentonite is then added to precipitate out any proteins, which can cause a haze in the wine. 
The wines are then ready to be blended to make the finished wine ready for bottling. We saw this earlier in the year. And so we've arrived at the end of our year at Brook Hill. During the year we've seen the vines being pruned, the grapes growing and the harvest and lots more besides. If you'd like to find out more about Brook Hill's award-winning range of table wines and sparkling wines, you can get in touch with Ian and Amanda at info at brookhillvineyard.co.uk. They'll be delighted to help you. On the Sunday before Christmas, Romsey Young Farmers held a fundraising rally for the Air Ambulance. Farmers from across the county drove their tractors in convoy around the area. A staggering 203 tractors took part. This is a speeded up view of some of the tractors assembling before the convoy set off. Thanks to Alex Drake for allowing me to use this clip. What a fantastic effort for a great cause. December wouldn't be December these days without seeing our houses lit up with Christmas lights. But if you want to see a real display, that's probably visible from the International Space Station, you need to go to Byron Road in Barton-on-Sea. This fantastic display along the road is organised every year. If you go to see it next year, don't forget to put a donation in the charity box. We'll end this year with a couple of festive images. If you've been kissing anyone under the mistletoe this year, I hope you ask them if they take a lateral flow test first. And here's everyone's winter friend, the Robin. Thanks for watching, and if you've enjoyed the video, please think about subscribing to our channel.